يا إله الكون قد أسلمت لك يا إله الكون قد أسلمت لك يا إله الكون قد أسلمت لك رب فاغفر زلتي ما أحكمك أبتغيها Alhamdulillah, we're very pleased today to uh, welcome our guest, uh, Sheikh Salim Al Amri, who's from the Arab Emirates. Alhamdulillah, the Sheikh has been traveling around the UK, giving lectures in many places. So, very pleased, mashallah, he's come from London today. Just to give a, a very short background about the Sheikh, uh, the Sheikh is a computer engineer by profession. Alhamdulillah, since his youth, he spent many years studying with many of the scholars uh, from around the world. Alhamdulillah, so the Sheikh, mashallah, is very learned. And uh, inshallah, we hope to uh, benefit greatly from his knowledge. The format of the program, uh, also the Sheikh appears on uh, various satellite channels, uh, so you may have seen him on these channels. Uh, just to um, point out what the program will be, the program is that uh, we will carry on for... Okay, we'll uh, carry on now until about uh, 3 o'clock, for about 50 minutes, and the first talk will be about Tawbah, repentance. Uh, thereafter, we'll take a five-minute break, and then the Sheikh will uh, field open questions and answers, but the questions and answers must be on paper only. So the, the questions and answers can be relating to anything within reason. So, uh, okay. <laughs> it doesn't have to be on paper as long as it's not problematic. If it's problematic, it has to be on paper. Okay, so inshallah we begin now. Uh, without any further ado, uh, we should. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار The topic actually is about repentance and the title All Repentance Be Happy and Before we delve and start elaborating on this topic first of all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he created man he has built within the man, within the human being the inclination towards committing sin. He has built within the human being the love or the ability to, to disobey him. And he has provided man and he has given man the free will to choose between the alternatives, to choose between obeying him or disobeying him. Because he wants us to obey him lovingly, willingly, not forcefully. That's why he has given the man the free will. The Muslim scholars, rahimahumullah, they discussed extensively who's better, a person, a pious person from among the human beings or the angels. And they said, the human being who is pious and righteous 
and he has the ability to disobey Allah, and yet he overcame all his whims and desires, and he obeyed his Lord, is better. Why? Angels, they have no choice to disobey Allah. لَا يَعْسُونَ اللَّهَ مَا أَمَرَهُمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ They cannot disobey Allah. They are created like that. Whereas a human being, he can obey or disobey. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is not an open invitation towards sinfulness. But we are here establishing and stating the fact about the reality of this human being. Are you following? Okay. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He created Adam alayhi salam, from day one, when he was just body, piece, dry piece of clay, Iblis looked around and he went around the body and he found this body so hollow from his side and said if this creature ever if this creature ever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked me to obey him I will disobey him and I will never spare any effort to mislead this creature. This shows the <coughs> eternal enmity and the everlasting enmity it least had for Adam and for his progeny. And that is what happened. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala breathed the spirit into the body of Adam alayhi salam, and he commanded the angels to prostrate before Adam, refused, uh, Iblis refused, as you know. And not only that, and he said, I will never stop misleading them, misleading his progeny. I will come to them, to his children from the right, the left, never stop misleading them, misleading his progeny. I will come to them, to his children, from the right, the left, the front, the back. But he didn't say from up and down. Because he knows from above is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And down, that's the sign of servitude, of Udiyah, and that's what he refused. But he will come to us from every direction, right, left, front, back. So this is what Iblis is worth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, go, do whatever you want. And by my might and glory, as long as they turn to me and seek my forgiveness, I will forgive them. Yes, you will be misleading them. Yes, you will make them disobey me. But the moment they turn to me, I accept them. That's why Iblis, on the day of Arafah, that day, he cries badly. He shed tears badly. Why? Why? Because he has been working for years. People were sinning just within a few seconds, few minutes. Allah forgives all the gathering. That makes him feel bad. That grieves him. So this is the mercy of Allah. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he has opened the door for us. That we can repent. That we can turn to him at any time. At any time. And Allah will accept our repentance. No matter whatever, no matter what we did. So my dear brothers and sisters, never, never despair. 
Never give up. Allah is going to accept you. The door is open for you. And if you commit a sin, immediately do something good after that. To balance it. If you commit a sin, do something good so that it will wipe it out. If you commit a sin, immediately do something good. And that good will wipe out that sin. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the door is open. Don't despair. This is from the shaitan. Because you'll find <coughs> many Muslims the shaitan comes to them and tells them, there's no chance. There's no chance for you to be accepted. Because the shaitan, alayhi la'anatullah, will not accept from you one single sin. You sin, you commit this sin, then he makes you commit the other sin, a sin which is greater, and he takes you from one sin to another to another until you leave Islam. Until you leave the deen. He will never leave you. Subhanallah. We read in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu when the child is born, The moment the child comes out from his mother's womb, what does he do? He cries. Why? Shaitan hits him. So the shaitan is waiting for you from the first moment you enter into this life. He hits the child in his navel. Only Isa ibn Maria he couldn't do that to him. So he deceives you from day one. And he doesn't leave you until you leave this world. You leave the dunya. And he's with you. Even when you are dying, he sits next to you. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah, when he was breathing his last, is the voice okay? Yeah. When he was breathing his last, his son asked him, Oh my father, say La ilaha illallah. Imam Ahmad said, Not yet. His son repeated, My father, say La ilaha illallah. He said, Not yet. Mahal Sunnah doesn't want to say La ilaha illallah. So the son that worried said, What is it, my father? He said, My son, the cursed one is sitting next to my head. The shaitan is holding and biting his finger. And he is saying, Oh, Ahmed, you escaped. I couldn't mislead you. So I'm telling him, not yet until I die, then I'll be sure that I really, I really escaped safely, not yet. So this is what the shaitan does, from day one till the end of the world, till you, the last day of your life. So the shaitan will not leave us, but alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, he has opened the door for tawbah, for repentance. And he knows that we are going to sin. He knows. He knows that. Not only that, he said, if the people do not commit sin, I will replace them with people who will commit sin, and then ask me forgiveness, and I will forgive them. So, we should not despair, my dear brothers and sisters, and the door is open.
for anyone to repent and go back to Allah Azza wa Jal. But having said this, Having said this, this doesn't mean that we should treat our sins lightly. We should not try to treat the sins lightly. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened the door. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves us more than our mothers, but also He is severe in His punishment. He is severe in His punishment. And He hates our sins. And that's why in the hadith, when a person sins, especially when he commits shameful deeds such as zina or robbery, what happens? The iman comes out. لا يزني الزاني حين يزني وهو مؤمن when the person fornicates, commits zina, at that moment the iman is taken away. No iman. The iman is taken away. And the iman remains on top of his head. And the moment he finishes, the iman goes back to him. And that's when he starts feeling bad and sad and regretful what he did. But at that particular moment, he only thinks of one thing, his pleasure, his desire, his lust. Because the Iman is removed. And when you stop sinning, when you finish the Haram, the Iman goes back. And the sins, they weaken this Iman. <coughs> the Iman gets weaker and weaker because of the sins. Because the tree, there is a tree, the tree of Iman in the heart needs to be nourished, needs, needs to be fed by the A'mal Saliha, the good deeds. The sins, they are like the weeds. They weaken this plant. So any sin, it affects your, this tree of Iman, it affects your Iman. That's why you don't enjoy reading the Quran. You don't enjoy the Salah. You don't feel that sweetness in your heart. That delightfulness, you don't find it. The reason, because of the sins. The perpetration of sins forms the layer from the heart. We call it Ran. The Ran. A thin layer will cover the heart. Because of what? Because of the sins. And if the heart is covered by this layer, nothing goes in. You read the Quran, you don't feel the impact of the Quran. You want to cry, you can't cry. You hear the speech, it doesn't affect you. It doesn't move your heart. The reason? Because of your sins. Subhana Rabbi Ali. One of the Salaf said, by Allah, if I commit a sin, immediately I see the impact and the effect of it 
in the behavior of my horse or my wife. And see how they correlate things. Oh, my horse kicked me today because of my sin. My wife today, she is not mood, she is not in the mood. Every morning she gets up, she makes me my fixes me my breakfast. Okay, he is nice, talking to me nicely, escorts me to the door, giving me a hug, kisses me, say goodbye, have a nice day. That day from the beginning, from the beginning. She got up, her gloomy face, angry. Why? Because of my sin. So this scar is saying because of my sin, I can see the effect. During the time of Umar ibn Khattab, this is the difference between us and the pious people, the people who had soft heart, the people who, whose sins were very, very, very little. At the time of Umar ibn Khattab, there was a small earthquake. Like the one think, yesterday in Kent, yeah. or something like that. So yes, it shook the little bit, it moved, and that's it. Umar immediately called the Muslims, the Sahaba, to the masjid. What did Umar say? Yeah. Umar was not a geologist saying, oh, one layer moved. Or, no. Umar said, you, you started committing sins, right? Ahdathum, you started disobeying Allah by Allah. If it happens again, I know how to discipline you. Addressing whom? The Sahaba. Umar immediately realized that this is happening. This is a warning from Allah, signal from Allah. You started disobeying Allah. If it happens again, I know how to discipline you. Because of the sins. Whatever happens to us, human beings, because of our sins. And when it comes to the Muslims, also because of their sins. So they have to turn to Allah. And they have to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever calamity strikes us because of our sins. So we have to understand this. We have to understand this very well. So yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ghafurul Rahim, most merciful, most kind, yes. But he's very severe in punishment. And he hates sinfulness. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah al dhariyat Surah 51, Ayah 50. Fafirru ila Allah, inni lakum minhu nadhirun mubiyin. Fafirru ila Allah. Fly to Allah, flee to Allah, hasten to Allah, run to Allah, fellow, fellow in Allah. SubhanAllah. Anyone whom you fear, you run away from, not you run to, to or not. If you fear something, you run away from it or towards it, away. But Allah, you fear Him, you run to Him. You run to? To him. La malja wa la manja minka illa ilayk. There's no shelter. There's no escape from you except to you. That's why one of the ulama, <coughs> a sinner came to him and said, Sheikh, I cannot give up sinning. I cannot give up sinning. 
I cannot leave the haram. So give me nasiha, give me advice. I said, fine. When you ever you want to commit the sin, look for a place that where Allah doesn't see you. Go somewhere where he doesn't see you and commit the haram. He said, Sheikh, there's no place I can hide myself. And he said, then you don't feel shame of yourself. He sees you and you commit the haram. <clears throat> when subhanallah, no one will commit a shameful deed in front of his father or his mother or his wife. True or not? You go to the porno sites and your wife next to you. Hello? You do that? No. You lock the door. And you close the door and then you go. Or if you want to watch a movie. And Allah is watching you, don't you? Allah is watching you. And the angels are writing. He moved from this side to this side, and this link, from to that link. Yes, two angels are writing. The two angels are watching, Allah is watching, and the third guy is laughing. You know him, huh? He's happy. So he said to him, if you want to commit a sin, go to a place where Allah doesn't see you. Also, if you want to commit a sin, commit it in a place that doesn't belong to him. Also, if you want to commit a sin, don't eat from his provision. Whatever he provides, don't eat. Eat from someone else. You know the answer. All these things belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we should feel shame for ourselves. We have to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to really thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given us everything. And then we disobey Him on top of that. And when we fall sick, we say, Oh Allah, oh Allah, help us. We never do it again. Many times we promised him, right? And then back to square one. In Ramadan, Imam is praying and people are crying and crying. Oh Allah, forgive us. And they are crying. And the moment they got out, Starting smoking, starting backbiting, slandering. SubhanAllah. But could it be a chef? Everything. All types of sins. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Fabirru in Allah. Fabirru in Allah. Hasten you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنِّي لَكُمْ مِنْهُ نَذِيرٌ مُّبِينٌ I am from him a warner to you, clear and open. I am a warner. The naked warner. So you have to flee to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Repent sincerely. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَعِدَّةُ الْمُتَّقِينَ الله أكبر سارعوا be quick race run إلى مغفرة for forgiveness from your Lord وجنة and for a garden whose width is that of the whole of the heavens and the earth prepared for the righteous so the Jannah, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it. And it's already created. Yesterday I received a question. Is the Jannah 
something physical or spiritual. Because now we are living in a time where Muslims are attacked and the non-Muslims are trying to confuse the Muslims and try by all means to put the seeds of doubt into their minds and to shake their faith and to shake their aqidah and to shake the fundamentals. The Jannah is something spiritual. Don't you hear? It's with the heavens and the earth. This is spiritual, physical, reality. Hellfire is a reality. Prophet Sallallahu he entered the Jannah on the night of Isra and Mi'ran. He walked in the Jannah. He saw the palaces of the Jannah. He saw everything. So it's the reality. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu says in the Hadith, He said, I saw a palace in the Jannah. Beautiful palace in the Jannah. And you know the palaces of the Jannah. They're not like the Buckingham Palace or whatever. These palaces, they're nothing. These palaces, they were, they are, they are built one block gold, the other one is silver. Gold and silver. Gold and silver. He said, the palace is in the Jannah. So he said, I saw one palace in the Jannah. I said, whose palace is this? They said, this, is, this belongs to a man from Quraysh. So he said, I thought that was mine. He said, let me go in. They said, it's not yours. This palace is not yours. He said, then who is it? Whose palace is this? He said, this is Umar's palace. This is the palace of Umar ibn Khattab. The Prophet Wasallam. then he told Umar. He said, Umar, I was nearly to enter your palace. But then I thought of your jealousy. You might feel jealous because I see your wives, your huriyat, and Umar started to cry. So it's a reality. The Jannah is a reality. The Prophet Sallallahu says, Man qara'a surat al-ikhlas ashar marrat fan allahu lahu baytan fi al-jannah. The meaning, whoever reads Qul huwa Allah wa had surat al-ikhlas ten times, a palace is built for him in the Jannah. And the hadith is authentic, a sahih al jamah authenticated by our Shaykh al-Bani rahimahullah. So you read, Qul Allah wa had ten times, palace is built for you in the Jannah. Receive the palaces of the Jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting us to his Jannah and to his forgiveness. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says to all the sinners, and we're all sinners, Prophet sallallahu made it very clear, كل ابن آدم خطاء خير الخطائين التوابون All children of Adam commit sins. All of them are sinners, except those, the best among them, and those who oftenly repent. Those who turn to Allah in sincere repentance. So every day a human being might commit to sin. Because the eyes commit adultery. And the adultery of the eyes, seeing the haram. The tongue, the ears. So all this, through these five senses, 
you commit sins. Because you need to lower your gaze. You need also to save your healing that you don't listen to anything haram. You don't talk haram. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا أَوْ يَظْلِمْ نَفْسَهُ ثُمَّ يَسْتَغْفَرِ اللَّهَ يَجِدِ اللَّهَ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا If anyone does evil, anyone does evil, or wrongs his own soul, you wrong your own self, but afterwards seeks Allah's forgiveness, he will find Allah often forgiving most merciful. The door is open. Don't despair. Don't say to yourself, well, you know, sometimes the shaitan comes to you and says, you are a hypocrite. How many times you promised Allah to make Tawbah? You play with Allah? That's what the shaitan does, says to you. You play with Allah? Do you think Allah will forgive you? You know why he does that? Because he doesn't want you to repent. He wants you to carry on sinning. So when you hear these things from the shaitan, say, get lost. Leave me alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts any human being when he turns to him. Yes, I will never give up repenting. I will never give up repenting until I die. Subhanallah. Some of the Sahaba, like Abu Mihyan, a Thaqafi, and like Himar, Abdullah, they were alcoholic. Sahaba. They were what? Alcoholic. Drinking alcohol. And many times the Prophet ﷺ, he lashed them. Many times. One day, one of the Sahaba, he cursed one of them. He said, La'anahu Allah. May Allah curse him. The Prophet Sallallahu said, don't curse him. Don't curse this alcoholic. Why? Because he loves Allah and he loves his messenger. And this is what? Testimony from the Prophet Sallallahu that this alcoholic, he loves Allah and he loves his messenger. Though he's alcoholic. He has weakness. He feels weak in front of the alcohol. And that's why he drinks it. But he loves Allah and he loves his messenger. And that's why the belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah that the sinners are not Kaabas. Are they Kaabas? They are Muslims. And they love Allah. And they are ready to defend the deen. Though they are disobeying Allah. See the contradiction? But they, I remember <coughs> in the 80s, from the 80s I have been coming here, the beginning, and they went to the speaker corner and first Ramadan. And there was a Muslim arguing with a non-Muslim and trying to defend the deen because he was talking bad about Islam. And she was arguing with him and was screaming. SubhanAllah, I looked. And she was smoking. And it was Ramadan. Imagine, he's defending the deen and she's smoking in Ramadan. This is the human being. He holds with him with himself a lot of contradictions. As Imam Ibn Qayyim said, you find the sinner, a thief, he said the thief is going to steal and he is hundred percent putting tawakkul in Allah. And he's going to steal. He said, Oh Allah, please save me. Don't let anyone see me. Hundred percent tawakkul. And he is going to steal. True or not? Very true. 
is going to steal, is going to disobey Allah, and at the same time, is asking Allah to protect him. He's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect him. So this is the nature of evil. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, if you make a step far, Allah accepts. Don't give up. Carry on making tawbah. The door is open for you. Also he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْمَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَخْبُرُ الدُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ O my servants who have transgressed against their own souls, despair not of the mercy of Allah, for Allah forgives all sins, for He is often forgiving, most merciful. Don't give up. Don't despair. Don't think that I will not forgive you. I will forgive you. The door is open for you. The door is open. And Alhamdulillah that in Islam, there is no need for confession. We don't confess to anyone. We confess only to whom? To Allah. So you turn to Allah, and you say, oh Allah, forgive him. And he forgives. No need to bring out the laundry. No need to bring out your dirt, as in Catholicism. In Catholicism, you cannot confess, you cannot re sorry, repent till you confess to the Father. So you have to come to the Father and say, Father, I have done this and this. 